Hey, Startup Nation, this is Dr. Carol. I'm just here, wanted to give you guys some helpful tips and things to remember as we move and navigate through this unprecedented uh, health pandemic. The first thing you guys want to remember is please wash your hands thoroughly and frequently. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds under warm water with soap. If you do not have access to a sink with warm water and soap, please use hand sanitizer um, that contains at least 60% alcohol. The next thing you want to do is please avoid large crowds and social gatherings. As young people, our immune systems are typically healthier and so we can be asymptomatic, which basically means that we can carry uh, the virus if we come in contact with it and our immune system will recover. But we also pose the risk of spreading it to those who are immunocompromised or who have chronic health conditions and our older people. So please avoid large, large crowds if you can. The next thing I would say is you Use respiratory hygiene. If you have to sneeze, if you have to cough, please cover your mouth in your sleeve, not with your hands. Please avoid touching your hands and face after you've done this as well. And please, again, wash your hands. And lastly, if you feel sick, if you have any of these symptoms, which is high fever, uh, initially a dry cough or fatigue, please seek medical help early. If you've been exposed to someone who might have had the virus or been in contact, please stay at home to avoid spreading spreading the virus to anyone else. Again, this is something serious, so we don't want to take it lightly. But those are just some helpful tips and reminders uh, for you guys as we navigate through this pandemic. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, stay safe. This episode is brought to you by Lena Creamer. Many of us love to power our morning with a good cup of coffee. However, sometimes we feel guilty because we will have to pay for that cup. Or let's be honest, Startup Nation, that second cup on the treadmill later, especially when we add creamer. And that's where leaner creamer comes in. The gluten-free, sugar-free, lactose-free, but also guilt-free option for your coffee. It uses a combination of coconut oil and natural supplements to jumpstart your entrepreneurial journey for the day. Not a coffee drinker? No problem. Use it as a sugar substitute in your tea, oatmeal, or whatever else you like to sweeten. Go to leanacreamer.com and use the promo code STARTUP15 at checkout. If you are listening to the podcast, the link is there in the show notes. Lena Creamer, begin a healthy new chapter. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. Hey, Startup Nation, before we get to today's guest, I want to share with you a book I recently read. So with that, big shout out to Greenleaf Book Group for providing the book for us. They would say, hey, Dominic, we got this book. We think you and your audience may enjoy. Would you be willing to kind of read it and share your thoughts on it? It's like, sure, no problem. And so that's what we're going to do right now. And if you want to check out all the other books and authors that they have there at Greenleaf, go to gbgpress.com. We actually have a link there in the show notes for easy access. So make sure you go ahead and check out that website for sure. Now, the name of the book is Flip Flops and Microwaved Fish, Navigating the Do's and Don'ts of Workplace Culture. Now, if you know me, Startup Nation, you know I love interesting book titles and, and, and stuff that are kind of off the wall. Honestly, as soon as I read the title of this book, I was instantly, okay, let's see what this is about. But before we dive deep into the book, here's a little bit about the book itself, what it's about, and the author. Let's first start with the author. The author is Peter Yawitz, founder of Clear Communication. He started this company in 1991, Startup Nation, so he probably knows what he's talking about. He specializes in communication and marketing strategy, training, and one-on-one coaching for global organizations in a variety of disciplines. He's born and raised in Manhattan, still lives there, actually. He got his undergraduate grad from Princeton University and an MBA from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. So clearly, once again, Startup Nation, 
This dude sounds pretty knowledgeable, if I may say so myself. And you can check out his website, peteryawitz.com. He has this amazing blog on there called Someone Else's Dad. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we dive into the book. Now, a little bit about the book itself. Flip Flops and Microwave Fish helps people starting out in their careers learn how to be more than just professional ish it actually says that professional ish right it offers very funny and practical advice on truly understanding and managing life at work written for both american and non-american young workers in addition to anyone else who's uncertain about how they come across at work this book provides useful tips that can be immediately implemented to help people adapt well to their workplace culture and startup nation that's so important in today's world a lot of times when we especially to my gen zers out there right a lot of times when we come into the workplace you know we just graduated from college and we dive into a, a new place of work or sometimes a lot of times our first place of work a lot of these skills what we like to call soft skills are kind of going to be expected once you walk into the door now, I don't know where the workplaces are going to expect you to get this stuff, because usually, you know, as an older millennial, you just get this stuff, this knowledge over time. But for some reason, they're going to expect you to walk in the door of this stuff. And that's why I'm going to recommend that you read Flip Flops and Microwave Fish for that very reason. First off, Startup Nation, it's a how-to book. And I love how-to books because there's no room for ambiguity. There's no room for, you know, what do I do next? Peter does a very good job of having those building blocks of what to do next after he's given you the first set of, you know, advice or instructions, if you will, however you want to take it, right? Also, it's an easy read, not in the sense of like, like a kindergarten or first grade book, but more so in the sense of like, you can see as you read in each piece, it's building towards something, right? For instance, chapter one, a new workplace, talks to you and walks you through like your first day, maybe a few of those steps right before you start a new job. Chapter two, everything communicates, what to wear, how to greet people. So that's what Peter does very well. He provides the building blocks. So that way you kind of take out, I mean, obviously you can't account for everything, but Peter does a really good job of taking out a lot of anxiety for you on your first day of work. Like the little subtleties that, that Peter has acknowledged and, and has witnessed over the years of his amazing career that he's imparting on you as the Gen Zer, as somebody who is not uh, customary to uh, business language and business customs like that. So it's very easy to read in that regard. And I love that part for sure. Another reason is that like, look, the chapters are not very long which is super important because a lot of times in how-to books, the, the author is pontificating and he's, he's you know, you can tell he, he's got to get all this out on his, off his chest or her chest or whatever, right? But Peter, you don't get that because with Peter, he doesn't take himself too serious. He pokes fun at himself. He pokes fun at the people that he's talking about in examples. He pokes fun at you as the reader, but it's all in good fun. And so you're not going to get like this whole thing of like he's better than you and you should listen to me because I'm that I'm this important. No, when he adopts the moniker of someone else's dad, it you can tell in this book, just like it's in, the, in his blog post in his YouTube channel, you can tell that in his book and it just makes for an easy read and a very great read in that regard as well. Also, the chapters are standalone. Each one of these chapters, Startup Nation, within the book are, you could definitely get something out of, and then as soon as you, you finish that chapter, you can implement it right then and there. And you know here at The Startup Life, that is what we're all about. If we don't provide that for you as soon as the episode ends, or in this case, if as soon as you close the book, then I feel like Peter shares the same sentiment that like, we haven't done our job. That's another reason why I want to recommend Flip Flops and microwave fish. Also Startup Nation, we, we talked about you know, these soft skills, but this book is evergreen. Look, business practices change over time. S markets change over time. You know, uh, different technology changes over time. But when it comes to soft skills, you know, a lot of the stuff really is evergreen. There are a few things that kind of changes over time, but the base of it all really is evergreen. And honestly, I feel like this is a book that you don't read just one time. As an older millennial startup nation, as I was reading this book, a lot of this stuff I did know. However, 
it was a great reminder. I was like, oh, you know what? I did kind of slack off on that a little bit when I had that business meeting last time. You know what? When I sent that email, I did kind of like flub a few words every here and there that could have, you know, made myself sound a little bit different than, or at least how I wanted to come across. So even for me, as a person who's been in corporate America for a while, as a person who's been as an entrepreneur for a while, it forced me to self-reflect. And that's why I definitely recommend this book, Startup Nation. It's for the Gen Zer who's entering the workplace. It's for the older millennial like myself. It's even for the, the baby boomer. And Startup Nation, I have to say that my chapter MVP of Flip Flops and Microwave Fish is chapter six. Chapter six, meetings, conference calls, and presentations. Because look, a lot of times Startup Nation, and you may not know this or not, but one of the biggest fears uh, that people have, and honestly, is some people fear more than death, is public speaking, right? And so when you're talking about conference calls, and, and you're talking about sales presentations, right? Those things can get a little tricky, but Peter does an amazing job of giving you those tools, giving you what you need in order to provide the most concise, the most accurate depiction of what you want to come across. But he also gives those tips about your target audience when it comes to that communication. He gives a magnificent example of if your target audience just wants the bullet points or if your target audience wants the long drawn out details, right? There's one example when he talks about how uh, how not to write an email. He gives this an example of this extremely long email with just full of just words that don't mean anything and stuff like that. And you come across this in business communications all the time. And honestly, Startup Nation, which I thought was hilarious, because he even says, like, you know, if you decide to read it and then, you know, you go through the passage and then afterwards he says, you know, if you read it, uh, you know, that tells me that Peter is he's extremely knowledgeable about what he does, but he's extremely approachable. And in this era of OK Boomer and stuff like that, that is so important startup nation which is why you definitely want to grab this book and also he has amazing anecdotes as well he gives anecdotes from his personal experience but he also gives anecdotes from the people that chime in uh, to him on, on someone else's dad.com he pulls some of those anecdotes into the book which gives you that real world experience because look a lot of times people talk about you know this is what you should do this is what you should do next but they don't give a whole lot of like the real world experience, right? And so Peter does this not only with his own personal experiences, but he does this with other people's experiences as well that share some of their concerns, share some of the challenges that they're having in the workplace. And he, and he does a really good job uh, in a very humorous way of helping those people. And, and I love some of the nicknames that he has for them as well, which is just uh, hilarious for Sure. So here's my final recommendation, Startup Nation. Flip Flops and Microwave Fish, it's a must buy. It's a must buy. The reason being is because if you are, once again, that Gen Zer who's just entered into workplace or you're coming from uh, another culture into the United States to, to do business or to do some work, or if you're the opposite, if you're in the United States and you're going elsewhere, um, to do business or do some work, this book is the one you want to have in your in your toolkit for sure. And it's not just for people who are just in the traditional nine to five, but it's also for my entrepreneurs as well. Look, there's a lot of stuff in this book that I got extreme value for, even whether it's new advice or new ideas, or if it's just reminders like, you know what, I should uh, do that. And honestly, Peter is the perfect person to write this book at the perfect time because honestly startup nation we're living in two concurrent eras right now first off and i mentioned this earlier when the era of the okay boomer type of thing right and a lot of times millennials and gen zers may not want to listen or don't really give much much thought to what uh people of that generation have and I, which i think is a detriment to gen zers and millennials as well uh but with peter you're not going to get that pontificating you're not gonna get that you know i'm important i'm older i've done all this stuff you should listen to me he comes in in a very approachable way he comes in very funny but also extremely and more importantly extremely knowledgeable at what he does he's also the perfect author for this book because he also is part of the era of the dad joke right you know we love dad jokes that's kind of the thing right now and he gives off that vibe where a little bit of corny but definitely in your corner, definitely there to help. Just like 
a classic TV dad, which I am very always very fond of for sure. So once again, you should definitely must buy flip-flops and microwave fish, navigating the do's and don'ts of workplace culture. So as we come up on college graduate season and you're gonna throw parties and throw dinners, uh, and have some type of nice little gift package for your college graduate, you need to include flip-flops and microwaves fish. It's definitely gonna set them up on the right path to success. It's definitely gonna set them up greatly in the workplace as they navigate their career or their path of entrepreneurship. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk to today's guest. Startup Nation, do you have friends and loved ones that you want to do something nice for, but maybe they live in the next city, the next state, or even halfway around the world. Well, I have a solution for you. Koya is the new and best way to let your friends and family know you're thinking of them. Choose a friend, record a message, and hide it in a location that they are likely to visit and give them a clue. When they arrive, your message will instantly appear. You can even send them a gift. Best of all, the app is completely free. Get Koya.com to download it now. That's K-E-T-K-O-Y-A dot com. Or check the link in the show notes. Koya, show you care when you can't be there. Tresta powers this episode of The Startup Life. Okay, Startup Nation, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Tresta. Tresta is an app for iPhone and Android that lets you do business calling and texting from anywhere. I know so many entrepreneurs that are still using their, their personal phone number for business calls. It can get complicated drawing the line between your personal and professional life. Startup Nation, this is the best business phone app out there. Whether you just need a business phone number or if your team is ready for a complete business phone system, Tresta is totally flexible and can grow with your business. And it's all unlimited. Calling, texting, and all of the powerful call management features like auto attendance, call recording, user groups, and more for just $15 per user per month. With Tresta, there's no contract, and you don't need any special hardware, just your smartphone you're already using. Tresta is easy to configure, so you can set everything up yourself, all online, avoiding all the hassle and high overhead costs of setting up a traditional business phone system, which is important because as entrepreneurs, we are always trying to cut cost and time. They're often a 30-day free trial, so you can see if Tresta's virtual phone system is right for you. Communicate smarter and more efficiently with Tresta. Start now at Tresta.com forward slash Startup Life. That's T-R-E-S-T-A dot com forward slash Startup Life. The link is there in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Tresta, business communication simplified. It's time to be about that life. The Startup Life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. We have a big time superstar in the building today. My mate, my friend from across the pond, the founder and CEO of Vast Minds, Nick Segal here on The Startup Life. What's going on, Nick? Hey, I'm very well, good. I'm very well, thanks, Dom. Thanks for having me. It's exciting to, to be here with you today. No worries. Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation today? I am ready to pour as much knowledge as I can so that the Startup Nation can get the most value out of this episode as possible. That, that is, is my goal for today. Yeah. That is what I love to hear. As always, Startup Nation, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Life powered by the Binge Podcast Network. So, Nick, man, first things first, man, let's set this party off right. Just kind of share with us your origin story, your path to entrepreneurship and everything you've been up to up until this point. Absolutely, absolutely. So I um, I had a bit of a strange path to to my, my current role. Um, so I actually started off in the financial services arena. So I started off as a investment banker on, on Wall Street. I worked for a few uh, investment banks. I My main role during that time was working within algorithmic trading team. So right from the start, um, as soon as I graduated, I, I was straight into a, a technical kind of role within financial services. Now, that role in itself, it led me to... Uh, it, it led me to explore a lot of different things about how algorithmic workflows work and, and the technical details behind that as well. Um, and that's where I really grew my passion for data science and AI. And this was, in, this was early on in my career. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm talking about first couple, two to three years of just graduating from, from uh, University of London. I really started to, to grow my passion for, for data science and artificial intelligence. 
Um, I started reading a lot of books on artificial intelligence, which were just weird to hear the kind of stuff that people were thinking about in terms of AI at the time. Um, but it, but it's crazy if I if I fast forward to now that to crazy to to imagine the reality of those of those uh, visions that people had let's say right. five or ten years ago um but anyway so early part of my career i started becoming very much interested into the uh, into quantitative uh, algorithmic development mm -hmm. um and so i started I, I started uh doing a lot of financial modeling and 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 um, a lot of predictive analytics on financial data um but i thought um okay this is cool um, but I was very curious about how these techniques can be applied to other industries. So I started exploring with, um, I started, I took my data science skills and I tried to transfer them to other industries. So um, I tried to work on, let's say, uh, problems, let's say in the fashion industry. So predicting what would be the next biggest trend, like what piece of clothing item, right. um, using consumer data and scraping social media data. Um, I also uh, started doing some work in real estate. So uh, predicting or automatically predicting the value of property prices based on a, a number of, of, of factors. Um, and then I came across a data set from Wisconsin Hospital, okay, and this 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 detailed around a few hundred patients of women, um, along with uh, whether each of those patients were diagnosed with malignant or benign breast cancer. So I so I took that data set and I thought, could I train a machine to be able to predict whether an individual has has benign or malignant breast cancer? Of, of course, if 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 to the startup nation out there, to, to, if you have malignant breast cancer, that's of course more serious than than benign breast cancer. Of course. Um, so um, I took this data set. I started playing with it, um, and I ran and I ran that data set through one of my uh, models that I developed for the financial services industry. Turned out that that model was around ninety seven percent accurate in mm -hmm. diagnosing whether an individual had benign or malignant breast cancer so i'm sitting there and and, and i and this has just happened and i'm sitting there and I'm thinking well this kind of technology can have such an enormous impact in the healthcare industry oh, sure. uh, we can really use this technology to help doctors diagnose diseases um and, and if, if i can if i can do this here's just with my laptop and and a data set that i downloaded from the internet from from wisconsin hospital who um who I'm grateful for, they open source that data set for anyone to play with. Um, but if I can do that, then what else can I do? Um, and that was really the, um, and then shortly after that, we founded Vast Minds. Um, and Vast Minds, I said, would dedicate, um, would dedicate all his resource and, and would dedicate all our efforts to producing some of the best technology out there. Uh, to really impact people um, from a healthcare perspective and also of course help the healthcare industry with with deploying new technologies that can help clinicians and, and doctors potentially diagnose life-threatening diseases so um, the overarching mission of vast minds became to make healthcare more accessible to to everyone absolutely Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. And, you know, Nick, and we were kind of talking a little bit before we started our conversation here about, you know, our current, you know, global pandemic crisis that we've been yeah. kind of going through and stuff like that, you know, and, and obviously it, it seems like when we scheduled this interview, no little did we know that, you know, what you do and what you talked about was going to be so vital uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> right now because you talked about people are contacting you and stuff like that so but kind of before we talk about the implications of what you do at vast minds and COVID 19 just kind of share with us you know startup nation a little bit about uh a little bit of your new normal what's what's going on what's changed what hasn't changed you know because there's a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners that are trying to figure some stuff out right now right mm -hmm. you know Unfortunately, we've had something, some that have closed. We, we, unfortunately, we've had some that's probably going to be closed for good because yeah. of this. But kind of share with us a little bit of what's going on with, you know, your new normal, your, you know, lifestyle, business and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so for us, um, the new normal, or let's call this the, uh, the new normal of self-isolation, shall I say, uh, hasn't, really, hasn't really changed much for us. As a software company, um, we can already work 
remotely so of so course. um a, a lot of our time actually was spent working remotely anyway so in terms of in terms of day-to-day -day business activities um we could still conduct a lot of r d uh remotely um and that's a, that's a beauty about running a software company um yeah. i know of course this is a really challenging time for for anywhere who for, for anyone who runs either a hardware business or brick and mortar business or even right. retail business um it is it is of course a time to 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 reflect and um and uh, but not those not only to reflect but also a time to innovate as well um and it, i think it, i think it gives founders and, and entrepreneurs can be so busy in their day-to-day -day life um as an entrepreneur and i think i think actually the new normal gives gives has given us some kind of space to to think about whether we're really on the right path whether we should be changing direction whether we should be innovating in our business um because like i said to you before or like some of my mentors have said um well actually i'd say 90 percent of them keep reiterating to the fact that um after this is over you can either come out severely uh, significantly ahead of everyone else or you could right. significantly fall behind so um it's really a great opportunity to, to innovate and come out um on the other side much stronger and, and ahead of or of any of your competitors for sure for sure thank you for sharing all of that and you know with vast minds and what you do with ai and you were just talking about this with uh, the scenario with the malignant breast cancer and the implement implications it can have uh, for the healthcare industry. And, you know, to many, when we talk about COVID-19, you know, depending on what part of the world you come from, stuff like that, uh, I think a lot of us, it may have kind of caught us off guard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is there a way, you know, when we talk about predictive uh, diagnostics and AI and stuff like that, was there a way possibly that we could have seen this coming a little bit sooner than maybe uh, than we have. So, in, interesting question. Now, okay. now there was actually one company. I believe it was in the U.S. or, okay. or, or it was a small startup in China okay. um, that actually does predictive analytics about pandemics. Mm -hmm. Now, in early December, oh, I think even it was even before December. Turns out that they predicted uh, this would become a pandemic. Mm. Um, but officials were were very were quite poor to respond to to a response of a startup which is which is saying to let's say government officials we yeah. believe we're going to have a serious pandemic right here. Yeah, that's, um, that's government for you, slow moving boat from time to time. So. It is, it is, it is, and and, and to be honest, and and, and um, the way that China responded quite quickly and efficiently was was definitely impressive. Right. Um, but but um, it turns out that. Uh, this only came to light a couple of months ago, um, but this small startup had had been able to do that and had been able to predict this pandemic, um, uh, before, predict that this would become a pandemic before it actually did. Right now, that's um, if anything, it does showcase that we need to be adopting more of these types of solutions and we need to be trusting more of these types of solutions. Now, the one th that now I, I I can kind of sympathise with the government officials as well for not yes. listening to these guys uh, because AI at the moment is still relatively a new type of technology for sure not many people understand the inner workings of AI so to AI it's to to to, to most outsiders AI seems too much like a black box right. so it's our responsibility as AI practitioners to educate individuals better and communicate more effectively about why our let's say our, our decision making machines are coming to their conclusions um only and, and and it's really it's not it's not the fault of anyone else for not listening it's actually i would say it's the fault of ours for not being more explainable in our outcomes and i, I think for any, every, any ai practitioner out there i think explainability is probably going to be the most important factor for um for uh for ease of customer acquisition as well over the next at least five years Got gotcha. you. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, Nick, clearly you were looking at my notes because I was going to ask you about that explainability uh, piece of it as well, because I can't. <laughs> hard of, yeah, you clearly you get out, get off my laptop, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I came across an article in, uh, in healthtechmagazine.net. Uh, and the article is called Artificial Intelligence in Healthcare, Why Transparency Matters. Uh, mm -hmm. It says that predictive capabilities have great potential in medicine, just as important 
making the functions visible and relatable to patients. And I imagine to patients, you know, healthcare officials uh, and, you know, government officials and stuff like that. So I guess I want to ask just kind of a follow up to that piece in the article Mm -hmm. and what you were just saying. What does that explainability look like? Because it's one thing to just say, this is what the data says. But mm-hmm. a lot of times people need that that story or that, you know, unfortunately, you know, maybe in this case that, you know, example, if you will. But what, what does that uh, that explainability piece look like for you, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. So so what what happens when a machine makes a decision? Um, let's let's call it the AI machine. Right. Yeah, it takes in a series of inputs. Now, those inputs could be, if we take the pandemic example, so the predict, predicting whether there, there would be a uh, predicting an upcoming pandemic. Um, now, that would take a series of inputs. And what one of those inputs may look like is a number of social media posts about individuals getting sick. Gotcha. That might be one input. And within okay. the last six months, um, the, another input would be the rate of increase of social media posts of individuals getting sick. Um, another input may be the geolocation of everyone reporting that they are sick. So, uh, so you can see they, they, they can eventually be thousands and thousands of, of inputs that you can feed into a machine. Um, and uh, machines don't have any limitation on dimensionality. So as, as humans, we have a fundamental limitation, and that is that we can only really analyze a few, we can only really make sense of a, uh, a correlation just with respect to maybe three or four features. We, we just don't have the um, intelligence or the capability to analyze millions of features at once and find specific correlations um, in, in that data. Um, and so, and, and, and just going back to that example, so another yeah. input may be, uh, maybe the number of missions um, that uh, a number of missions to hospitals uh, that refer to viral infections. So that's that's again an- another input. Now, what explainability looks like is if it's if it, now the output of that algorithm may be yes, we predict there's an upcoming pandemic. Now, what explainability would look like is us to look at those individual features and for the AI to tell us well what what importance did it put towards each of those features to making that decision? Um, so what the, what the machine may do in, in explainable cases said, well, hey, I came up with this decision that a pandemic is likely specifically because the rate of increase of viral infections or admissions to hospital in this specific region was above 5%, let's say. Now, anything above 5% will lead to a pandemic because there's a multiply effect that, that you can add to that uh, type of figure. Um, or it could say uh, not only that, but that also in conjunction with the number of tweets about individuals getting sick is usually quite a pretty good predictor of whether there would be an upcoming pandemic. Um, so, it's, so, so explainability looks like a machine telling us how it put how it weighted the import, importance of all those features that fed into that machine to make that decision. Um, so, and, and also explainability does look like if we were taking in, let's say, another feature which included, um, I don't know, retail sales, because gotcha. you'd assume that retail sales may decrease if there's an upcoming pandemic and people are getting more sick and staying at home. Um, so so the, the machine may say, no, I put no importance towards retail sales. I don't think retail sales was, was a, a big... Um, um, an important feature in the decision that there will be an upcoming pandemic. So that's what explainability looks like. It's a machine telling us how much importance it put towards each of the feature input features that it analyzed when making that uh, decision. All right, Startup Nation, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. This episode is powered by a personal revolution podcast. Startup Nation, have you been stuck inside wondering how to take charge of your life? Is there something you want to do but haven't been able to do yet? In Personal Revolution, best-selling author and life coach Allison Task 
helps you take control of your life with inspiration and humor so that you move from where you are now to where you want to be and have fun doing it. It's like having a personal coach whispering in your ear. This three-month podcast course, along with bonus episodes each month, will help you create a clear vision for what you want out of life, remove the frustrating blocks that are holding you back, develop a detailed action plan that will drive you to where you want to be, and build a network that will help you create your future. And at $4.99 per month, the Personal Revolution Podcast comes with a personal workbook and real-time access to a community of other change makers working toward their goals with positivity, possibility, and momentum. And for a limited time, all of this is available to you for free. That's right, Startup Nation, free. Download the Himalaya app in your app store, look up Personal Revolution, and enter promo code REVOLUTION at checkout to get your first month absolutely free. So if you're ready to go after a better life, you're ready for Personal Revolution. Startup Nation, make sure you stay tuned at the end of this episode for an exclusive trailer for the Personal Revolution podcast. Oralex powers this episode of the Startup Life. Startup Nation, as a podcaster, radio host, and business owner, I know a thing or two about the need for your message to come through clearly to your target audience. The last thing you want when trying to close a big deal over the phone or giving a sales presentation in your conference room is to have the person you are talking to be distracted by either the fact that you sound like you're in a warehouse or an outside noise like a fire truck. Trust me, Startup Nation, I know this all too well from experience. And that is why Oralex has your back. Oralex Acoustics creates professionally tested products that you can trust in a commercial space or at home. Better office acoustics improves intelligibility when video conferencing or generic conversation reduces stress and helps build a proactive work atmosphere. From a home studio for my content creators to your office space downtown, your gear performs better in an acoustically treated room. Trust me, you are in good hands with Oralex as they are the number one brand in acoustics, providing trusted solutions for over 40 years. Also, you can download the Oralex Acoustic Treatment mobile app in the Apple or Google Play Store to give you specifically designed and instantaneous recommendations for various room types. Go to Oralex.com and use the promo code STARTUP in all caps for 10% off your entire order. The link is there in the show notes if you are listening to the replay on the podcast. So if you are ready to stop sounding like you're having a sales meeting in a sports arena, go with Oralex. Professional audio made simple. Welcome back, Startup Nation, as we continue our conversation with Nick Segal, founder and CEO of Vast Minds. Nick, I want to ask you this, man, because I saw that you were at uh, the giant healthcare event there in the UK. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I saw your interview with Natalie Turner from Disruptive there. And so I know I think you're going to be speaking there this year in December, correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah well, we hope if, if, it, if, it's, uh, if everything comes yeah. down by this point. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. And, and so that, that kind of leads me to my next question, because, you know, obviously this is a, a fluid situation, uh, you know, and, and you're collecting data. You know, you even talked in that interview with Nally that you're that, you know, data and healthcare is like so much. And you, you use uh, some some AI terms, you know, some data collecting terms that I'm not even going to try to remember. Yeah. But um but basically your point was that we're collecting a lot of data when it comes to healthcare and stuff like that. And you kind of alluded to that a little bit when you talk about social media posts mm-hmm. and who's getting sick and stuff like that. I know this is a fluid situation. And so yeah. I know by the time, if you're able, if we get, get this thing contained uh, by that time and you have the event, what are some of those things that you are going to share with the audience at your speaking event that you think, you know, we would have learned by that moment. Like, I guess, what are some of the things that, you know, right now, obviously at this, at this, at the moment of this recording, and what are some of the things you hope to have learned if you're given that speech uh, at the end of the year there at the giant healthcare event? Yeah, absolutely. I think we'll learn one, uh, one really important thing, especially within healthcare technology. And that is um, that this situation has, has um, it will not only cause a temporary shift in the way we work remotely and the way we interact with with doctors remotely, um, but it will enforce a fundamental culture change in the way we engage in those same activities. So I I think we were already heading in in the direction of, especially in the UK, in the direction of working from home, um, flexible working, all that kind of stuff. Um, telemedicine was becoming really popular. So, t- what telemedicine is 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 instead of going to a doctor to, um, if you feel ill or you want to explain your symptoms, you can have a virtual teleconference with that doctor over 
um, over a smartphone application and, and effectively that doctor can, can speak with you over video conference like Zoom or like Skype. It's just, just another form of, of uh, video conferencing. Right. Um, and um, those, those flexible working and tele, telemedicine were already gaining some traction. Now, I think this situation has, of course, caused a massive spike in, in, in remote working and pretty much remote everything. Um, I mean, even uh, I'm not sure if if, if the uh, delivery services are still running in in the U.S., but I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're spiking here in the U.K. Just remote everything, right? And, and right. remote healthcare is is not going to be uh, remote healthcare. Seen it has a massive spike in interest, and um, right. and if everything comes down, I think that this will not only cause a temporary uh, spike in interest, but this will enforce a culture to continue working um, in a flexible way um, whereby people will start engaging more in digital health solutions. Um, one of the things I think that this has taught us is that we need to be more open to adopting new digital health solutions. So I'll talk, to, I'll talk a bit later about what we're doing in terms of that respect. Um, yeah. But we, we do need to adopt a lot more uh, digital solutions because in this time of need, um, we need to be. We need to have access to healthcare. And if you, if the government tells us all to self isolate, but we're used to going out and seeing our doctor, um, right. it's kind of counterintuitive. Sure. So, so one of our mission is to make healthcare more accessible uh, for anyone, and that is by deploying intelligent software on simple consumer technology devices such as a smartphone. Um, which can, which we can leverage the, the, the already the existing hardware on a smartphone to to actually extract a lot of information about an individual than than was previously thought. For sure. Well, I mean, you know, I know we talked about it a little bit a little bit before we started, you know, our session today. But you know, I, you know, go ahead and share now, you know, some of the things that you're working on to kind of help with that, you know, that COVID nineteen and everything else in between. Kind of share what Bass Minds is working on right now, if you would, sir. Absolutely, absolutely. So what we're working on is is um, is our product is is actually very very simple to use, gotcha. and all it would require as a uh, when we deploy this as a smartphone application, all it would require is for a user to simply s stare into their selfie camera for about one to two minutes, and that that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all the user will have to do. Gotcha. Um, we'll take care of the rest. So effectively, what we do is we are trying to visually extract as much information as physically possible about the physiological vitals of an individual just by looking at their face. Mm. Um, now, machines can see things that humans can't, right? And we, and, right. And we, and, and, and we leverage this, we, we, exploit this uh, we exploit this phenomenon. And um, we're, we're working on leveraging a technology called PPG, and that is photoplethysmography. Um, and what that takes advantage of is the fact that the skin is translucent. So what I mean by that is light actually penetrates the skin. Hmm. And so when light penetrates the skin, it's refracted back at a different intensity. Um, and that different intensity is 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 that differing that the, the difference in intensity is caused by the changes in blood volume underneath the skin so your skin actually subtly uh, and very slightly changes color every time your heart beats and that's a weird phenomenon for for any human any anyone to hear because if i look at an individual's face i i, I don't see any kind of change in color in their in their skin um right. but it happens and 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 computers can pick that subtle change up by small changes in pixel values within a video image so we we specifically look at a video image um, we measure tiny tiny fluctuations in the pixel values um of that image and we, we well, before we do that we first lock on to the individual's face so we're not picking up changes from let's say a cupboard in the background or, gotcha, or right. uh, a window in the background or so, something like that. So right. we first lock onto the person's face um, so we can analyze and, and specifically um, we analyze their upper cheeks. Now we found that we get um, more signals from their upper cheeks uh, 
more so than anywhere else on their face. And I, I just personally think that's because your skin is thinner where your upper cheeks are. Um, so you probably show a lot more information from that region. But anyway, from that region, we extract what's called a photoplethysmography signal. And uh, what we can tell from that is the real time heart rate of that individual, real time respiration rate of that individual, right. and also the real time oxygen saturation levels of that individual. And what we're working on at the moment, given the current situation, is to visually be able to tell someone whether they have an elevated body temperature. Um, now, if in effect, we are aiming to, to, to deploy this as a smartphone application to help people better monitor their vitals. Because at this point in time, it's the government has told us, if you have symptoms, stay at home. Right. But if I have symptoms, how do I know? How do I know if I've got the coronavirus or not? Like, I, just, I just don't know. Right. Um, so this is, this, is, this is all about our whole mission, making healthcare more accessible. And now everyone has a smartphone. Everyone has access to a smartphone, and that smartphone has a pretty neat camera. That, I mean, the camera on a smartphone is, considering where it was 10 years ago, right? right the smartphone on the camera is, is, is extremely, extremely good for picking out this, these types of signals. Um, and, and we leverage that to extract all this physiological information about a, a person. And if you look at the Chinese guidelines, they say for any individual has, who has a severe case, case of, of coronavirus, they usually experience a higher than normal respiration rate, which is something we can measure visually, and also a lower than normal oxygen saturation level, again, which is something we can measure visually. And of course, um, people usually experience elevated body temperatures, um, yeah. which is also something that we're working on as well. So we're, we're trying to put, we're trying to, instead of individuals subjectively assessing their symptoms, we're really trying to help individuals quantify their symptoms quantify their vitals so they can make a more accurate diagnosis of themselves effectively of, of whether they are potentially infected um and, and and this just it goes back to our mission of making healthcare more accessible for everyone i hear that and, and that's super important that part right there making uh healthcare accessible for everyone and, and and this is why i love doing this show because you know, for that very reason. And thank you, Nick, for all of that. I really appreciate that. No, reason, no problem. You know, for sure. The reason I love doing the show is because a lot of times, look, you know, a lot of times when we talk to small business owners and entrepreneurs and, and the audience that we talk to, look, they're, they're making these, cre they're creating these amazing businesses, right? Yeah. But this is one of those moments where entrepreneurship can definitely like, not just move us forward, but also help people. Exactly. And, and this is this is why I love doing this show. So Nick, thank you so much for sharing all of that. No problem at all. Sure, my brother, for sure. So I, I want to ask you this, man, because I was looking on the Instagram page, you know, up and down and some some of the tech which, you know, which was amazing. And you talk about the like the not the, the facial recognition part of it and stuff like that, which was I just thought was totally amazing but you also have where you know we can use the same technology to kind of help with uh, concussions when it comes to american football and we're going to make sure i say american football not football football right but, yeah <laughs> uh, uh, but when it comes to concussions kind of share with us you know how that can help in that regard because you know a lot of us here in the states we love our american football and concussions has become a hot topic in that regard so kind of share with that a little bit as well if you would yeah, yeah, of course. And, 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 and to be honest, I think American football is so much more interesting than UK football. Sorry to, to the startup nation who, who, who finds <laughs> soccer more interesting, but uh, I just think NFL is just so much more cooler than UK football. Like, come, come on. Dude. You know what? To me, you know, it's funny because I, I, I'm the, of the opposite of that. And I think it's probably both of us taking the sports that we are near close to for Fair granted enough. a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because the yeah. thing I love with, 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 with football uh, I love the anticipation, like yeah. the build up, right? You know, so I, I definitely understand. But go ahead, man. I didn't mean to. Oh, dude, especially the Super Bowl. I mean, oh, my oh well, God. I that mean, the Super, just... Bowl the Super Bowl. I, I, you know, you, that's hard to compete with. So. Yeah, it's hard to compete with. But yeah, yeah. So, so concussion is actually a really big problem, not only for NFL players, but in right. the UK for rugby players. Now, there is when you are concussed um, on the pitch for any sports player. If you think you've been concussed, 
the problem is not so much that you'd be diagnosed incorrectly. The problem is that you just won't tell anyone. Mm. And now that, that's a bigger problem than being diagnosed incorrectly because more, 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 more players are just not telling anyone. Um, so that, would, that means that players are returning to play before they should, which means that they are at higher risk of suffering from severe traumatic brain injury. Um, which is that I mean, I, that can be a permanent thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so what we're trying to do is is find a way of again just through a camera visually screening for whether someone has been concussed. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you um, a kind of a cool way which we're doing this. So, what happens when you've been concussed is um, there are fundamental physiological changes that happen in in your body, mm-hmm. um, and one of those changes is is done by the is is governed by the autonomic nervous system and that is the the system in your body uh which effectively governs all your involuntary uh voluntary human activities such as breathing such as blood flow such as digestion um anything that is beyond conscious control is something that your autonomic nervous system controls gotcha so you, you can't control your blood volume you can't really control the speed at which you digest food um, that is all controlled by your autonomic nervous system. Now, a great and non-invasive proxy for measuring how your autonomic nervous system doing is, is called uh, heart rate variability. Um, and, and what that is, is it is the variability in time intervals between successive heartbeats. I'll break it down. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. Okay. It is effectively, you think about from, from heartbeat one to heartbeat two, let's assume that takes, um, the time it takes to go from one to two is around, let's say 300 to 400 milliseconds. And let's say the, the time it takes to go from heartbeat two to, to the third heartbeat, that is around 100 milliseconds. Um, so all the heart rate variability does is just measure the deviation between successive heartbeats. Um, that, that's pretty much all it is. And there's, there's different things you can do with it. You can measure, let's say, the, the five successive heartbeats, or you can measure 10 successive heartbeats. You can take the average of the 10 successive heartbeats. You can measure the mean. You can measure the standard deviation. All these kind of things. Um, but, but what that variability indicates to us is whether there has been a change in the autonomic response of an individual. Mm. Now, there's one parameter called the RMSSD. It's just a type of it's, it's just a type of HRV parameter. Um, it just adds up successive time interval differences and takes the standard deviation of those. Um, but that's shown to be very unstable in in individuals that have been concussed. So there's there's been a research uh, study out in 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 the states on on your side of the pond with right. um, which has taken NFL players and studied their RMSSD, which is a HRV parameter, pre and post concussion. Mm. Um, and it's shown there's been a significant, so your RMSSD should be pretty, pretty stable. It shouldn't really change that much as, as, a, as a normal person. Right. Uh, but when you are concussed, it's shown that that specific parameter fluctuates rapidly. Now to calculate that parameter, you need to be pretty good at accurating your, your heart, heart rate over time. So we've just leveraged the fact that we can visually extract heart rate, which means we can visually measure your heart rate variability because we take the time intervals between successive heartbeats and measure that specific parameter. So we effectively getting to a point where you can look into a camera and we can give you a, uh, let's say a risk score of whether you've been concussed or not. Gotcha. Um, and, uh, and effectively we, we, we want to help, uh, we want to help, um, players that, um, just, just don't report these symptoms because if you are a professional NFL player, you probably don't want to say you're concussed because that means you're on the bench and that means you're, you're more likely to be off the bench for a while because if someone comes in and takes your spot and is, and is shown to be extremely better than you, why as a manager would I take that guy who's on the bench back on the field? Right. Um, so th- there's all that kind of political stuff. But, of course. But in the long term, um, this would significantly help the performance of, of players and, and optimize when their recovery time should be after they've had a concussion. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing all of that, Nick, for sure. So, man, let's talk shop a little bit, man. Let's talk about Vast Minds a little bit. Talk, tell sure, me, sure. Yeah, tell me about the team that you have assembled there. I see that you, you've added three new team members there. Uh, not yeah, actually, so- we've added a couple of more over the last, oh. uh, last few days. Oh, okay, well, uh, 
share all of that for sure. Yeah. 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 Of course. So I actually, I'm, um, I'm the co-founder of the business. My co-founder, uh, is Dr. Claire Button. So she primarily comes, she brings the medical expertise and, and the medical, the medical knowledge that we need to, to make sure that our solutions are effective in the medical world. Um, and her, she, she has actually spent, uh, after doing her PhD in, in immunopharmacology, she has spent most of her time helping to build up early stage life science and health tech companies, um, right from the idea stage to IPO stage. So, so not only does she bring the medical expertise, but she brings, the, uh, she brings serious business credibility to us. Um, and and she, she's gone through lots of rounds of fundraising as well and, and, and um, takes startups all the way from idea to, to IPO, like I said. So uh, right. not only she's, a, she's, a, she's an incredible asset to have as, as someone from a medical background and also someone from a business background. Um, one of the other, so one of the other members on our founding team is uh, Mr. Raj Sharma. So he is our CTO and also our chief data scientist. So he spent the last year, uh, sorry, not last year, the last 20 years, in gotcha. fact, um, doing AI research and working for the likes of Microsoft and Google and, and Yahoo and, and some of these big tech players. Um, he, he's, he's, he's spent a number of years working on, on, on AI technologies before the word even AI became a buzzword. Um, so he has a lot of deep experience with um, with uh, how AI technologies work. Um, we also have a, we also, the, the recent hire, um, which is probably not shared on my Instagram yet, I'll definitely have to share this, mm -hmm. um, but is uh, we brought on an individual called Dr. Raj Kumar, um, who is now our chief medical officer. And um, his, his, pri his, uh, his primary expertise is conducting clinical trials in an effective way. Um, now, because some of our devices verge on being, let's say, diagnostic devices, even though it's not like a real thing, it's just, it's just a bunch of algorithms, right. they, they're kind of verging on being classified as diagnostic devices. So we do have to go at some stage for FDA approval and, 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 and C marking as well. Of course. for some of our products. Um, so he has had a lot of experience conducting, uh, conducting high-level chemical trials for big pharmaceutical companies as well and, and also has been involved in globally presenting and publishing many scientific academic um, publications on, on um, various medical topics. For sure. So he's our, he's our chief medical officer. We also have two other researchers um, working with us, um, both PhD level in computer vision specifically. Um, so they are primarily working on the development of our new technology. Uh, we are also, so we love to just engage in new raw research and just find out stuff um, that is pretty novel and, and pretty new. Um, and um, so, so we also have, so they're primarily engaged in, in research and, and development and, and discovering, potentially conducting own experiments ourselves to see if there's potentially new things that we can extract out of, um, out of just visually screening someone. Um, and and one, of those, one, of those, one of these ideas that we had was visually extracting blood glucose levels um, to, to better help a diabetic patients manage their insulin levels. Um, so that's, that's Yevgen and Pavlo, who are both on our research team. And we also have uh, three board advisors. Um, one of them is, is Peter Buckman, who comes, um, who actually heads up, uh, who actually heads up services for MediData Solutions, which is a, a, a massive US uh, software, software provider for pharmaceutical applications. Um, one of our other advisors is Kathy Prescott. She has a lot of experience working with life and health insurers over the past 10 years. She worked with some of the, the biggest, uh, biggest reinsurers over the last uh, few years go globally. Um, right. And then we have, we have also one of the other advisors who's actually become an, a very active board member, um, Rad. He is, he is a, he's a really decorated data scientist. He's a decorated entrepreneur. Um, he's, he's got all the war wounds of, of entrepreneurship. He's been a great mentor uh, to myself and the rest of our team um, and really has given us 
been able to give us clarity and direction in terms of what we should be focusing on. But uh, um, he's really had the, the technological entrepreneurial background that, that we need uh, to, to succeed. So that's, that's kind of our team. It's, okay. still, it's, still, it's still small. It's still, I'm, I'm, we're definitely looking to grow within the next 12 months. Gotcha. Um, so we're always, always interested in talking to, to individuals who, who are more importantly just passionate about what we're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. And I saw that you had a few partnerships with IBM and the National Health Services and stuff like that. Kind of share with you, you know, as much as you possibly can, kind of share with you some of the work that you've been doing with them. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the big technology companies such as IBM, such as right. Amazon and Microsoft, they've become extremely helpful for any new tech startups. Um, and, and some of the things that we're doing with IBM is leveraging their existing power and their infrastructure because as a startup, um, and I'd encourage anyone, uh, any of, any of the, the startup nation who has a tech startup, reach out to IBM, reach out to Microsoft, please reach out to me and I can help you. I can, I can get an introduction for you if you need. Um, they are definitely so helpful when it comes to building out new solutions because as a startup, we just don't have the cash to invest in massive data centers. Um, right. but, but, but IBM and, and these guys, they already have the infrastructure in place to power a lot of, um, to power a lot of technology solutions. So, so some of the things that we're doing with IBM is specifically working within their healthcare East Kill system. And um, they've been really helpful in terms of providing us the infrastructure that we need to power some of our solutions. Because one of the things that every startup has, uh, and issues that, that any, any startup would have is a scalability. So do you have the right infrastructure in place to be able to scale effectively? Um, probably 90% of the time, the answer is no for us. The answer is also no. Um, so we would leverage and, and, and these big tech players know that, and they want to help us grow and, and they could also grow with us. Um, and so what they are doing is, is lending out their infrastructure for us to be able to power our solutions so that when we scale up to, let's say a million users in, in the future, um, we can have the infrastructure ready to do that. And, and there won't be a scramble for, for there would be a massive server crash on our end because we just don't have the scalability infrastructure that we need. Um, they, we definitely have, that they could definitely provide us with the infrastructure to do that. Um, but, uh, but aside from that, IBM uh, specifically run a healthcare and life sciences ecosystem. It's made up of around 20 different partners, one of which uh, we're involved with. And um, they are regularly hosting meetups every, every three months. Of course, that has had to stop for now. Uh, but they're regularly, ho- regularly hosting meetups and, and allowing us to present our solutions to senior IBM officials. Um, they, they, they are very helpful in that sense. And it's... it's um, I, it's it's very much become a collaborative ecosystem for any startup that wants to get involved with these big technology players. They they definitely become very inclusive of new technology startups. So um, I really am grateful to to the team at IBM for for helping us with everything. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. And if you do want to get in contact with Nick and you think you may have uh, something that he can kind of help get you in the door with the IBM or something like that, we have his contact information there in the show notes for easy access. Thank you for that, Nick. I really absolutely. Appreciate absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. So look, man, you know, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping up here. I just want to ask you, you know, what's your entrepreneurial superpower and why? That's such an interesting question. Okay. So I, um, so I love reading, right? Okay. I, I try and get through at least one book a week. Um, and one of the one of the best books I have read recently was the Five AM Club by Robin Sharma. Okay. And um, and I love reading books about entrepreneurship and and productivity as well. So different mind hacks that you can apply as an entrepreneur to become super productive and ten x your productivity. Um, so one of the things that I think has, has super powered my productivity is journaling. Mm. Um, and, and every time I, I, I try and wake up uh, very early in the morning, um, the first thing I do is, is meditate that, that 
clears my mind for the day massively. Um, straight after meditating, I journal, and I have the the simple that simple routine has I can definitely claim that that has ten x my productivity um, in terms of getting the things that I want to get done throughout the day. Right. And and the way I journal is pretty simple. I just ask myself what is, what are the three main tasks um, that I need to get done today. Um, I write those down, and then I then cross off two. So I'm left with one task, mm. and that simple that that simple exercise has led me to produce more over the last few months than I'd say the last year combined. Gotcha. Um, and and I think as as young entrepreneurs, everyone likes to to do a lot of things and focus on a lot of different ideas, and it really really helps once you have clarity and vision on one thing and super focus on one thing. It, I mean, I didn't realize this in, until I tried it myself, but when you just have that, that intent to either get one thing done and focus on one product, you can really superpower your productivity. And um, of course, um, we, we hope that will translate into to meaningful um, revenue gain as well. And I think that's, for me, that's been one of the most important things, important changes I've made to, to my life. Thank you for sharing that. And so before I ask the last question, Nick, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for coming on the Startup Life Powered by the Bench Podcast Network. Man, you gave some amazing value uh, that we can all chew on and definitely some hope as we try to fight this global pandemic, man, for the, with the stuff you're doing there and your team are doing their advanced mind. So I appreciate all of that for sure, my man. No problem. Thank you so much, Dominic. It was great to be here with you. And for the Startup Nation, um, anyone who is interested in what we're doing, if I can help in any way, um, please reach out to me. I am um, I'm, I'm super, super open. I'm more than happy to offer any advice or just have any, any, any kind of quick chat. Um, that that you think you you may need. So if you think I can give you some kind of value or help you in some way, uh, please reach out. I'm more than happy to talk. We definitely appreciate that. And once again, Startup Nation, all of Nick's contact information are there in the show notes for easy access. So before I let you go, man, you know, look, there's an entrepreneur out there that feel a little stuck in their business, man. They got all this stuff going on around us, and they're feeling a little. A little, a little, you know, discouraged, if you will. If you would, mm -hmm. man, give them some words of encouragement, if you would, to take us out for today. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a, it's a great time to just reflect and make sure that you're going down the right path. And whatever you're doing, whether, whether you're in a, a, in a job or you're an entrepreneur yourself, um, this is a great time to either work on your product or work on your service and just check in with yourself to make sure you're going down the right direction. I would say that this is a temporary thing. Um, any, I, I think this is a real time to come out ahead of everyone else. Um, and, re, and just by the, the simple act of reflecting where your business is and, and what you need to do to get it where you want it to be. And, um, for anyone who is, is running a business, which is of course, significantly suffering because of this pandemic, whether that be a restaurant business or anything else. Um, it's a great time to innovate. So if I was running a restaurant business, I would definitely think about setting up the delivery in infrastructure in place to be able to deliver out my services to individuals. Now, I know some, some restaurants in the UK are already starting to do that. Um, it's definitely a time to keep positive, um, definitely a time to innovate. And, and if anything, if you, if, you, if you just abide by those two rules, I am 100% sure that you will come out stronger on the other side of this. And if anything, this will be a positive thing for you guys. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you so much. And that's going to wrap up this session of the Startup Life. We want to thank you so much again, Nick, for coming on the show. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, 
Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new Startup Blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life. Startup Nation, here's an exclusive trailer from Allison Task and her Personal Revolution podcast, the career and life coach that has been featured on Good Morning America, The Today Show, The Early Show, USA Today, and many more publications. Check it out. Hi, my name is Allison Task, and I am the host of Personal Revolution. Are you ready to be happy and do that thing you always wanted to do? Well, I am thrilled to announce that I have now made available for free the Personal Revolution podcast course. This course is based on my best-selling book, and it is now yours for free wherever you like to listen to podcasts. It includes 10 original episodes with plenty of never-released-before content, and then it includes a premium version. For $4.99 a month, you will get a customized workbook. You'll get access to a private private community on Himalaya, and you'll have just-in-time audio drop-ins from me again in the community on Himalaya. Just go to Himalaya.com, look up Personal Revolution, and type in Revolution to get your first month for free. I'll look forward to seeing you in the community. So Startup Nation, if you're ready for a personal revolution, go to the show notes and subscribe to the Personal Revolution Podcast.